Welcome everyone who is watching this. This is Ultimate Academy Steam presenting the series Onyx Financial Track. This is going to be the first lecture which will be an introduction to ERP and what it means. ERP stands for Enterprise Resources Planning. To have a clear understanding of ERP, firstly, we need to know the meaning of enterprise resources. Enterprise resources are divided into two sections. First of all, human resources, and second of all, the capital. Human resources, as we know, is basically the employees at a company or a workplace. As for the capital of a company, it can be allocated between inventory, purchasing, customers, cash and safes, cash and banks, and other. It's basically all the money that the company possesses divided or coming in different forms. If you notice, both of these departments within the company, um, ERP treats them like modules. And it aims to link these modules together to get the best results and achieve the highest benefits for the company. We should know that ERP is not a system. It's basically a concept that first appeared in England in the 90s and the idea of ERP had been implemented or let's say translated into many systems. Those were called financial systems. As we mentioned before, there are many programs working by the concept of ERP and the best six programs in this field are SAP, Microsoft Dynamic, Oracle, JD Edward, PeopleSoft, and Onyx Pro ERP. In our upcoming lectures, we will study Onyx Pro ERP, which is developed by Ultimate Solutions, of course. We will study the different modules in details. These modules are mainly general ledger, inventory, purchases, and sales. For more details on Onyx Pro, you can visit the following URL, onyxproerp.com. Now, before the development of ERP, the data was recorded manually, on paper, we mean, which obviously can be lost or damaged because, you know, papers, they can't really be saved for that long. And it's very impractical for data that needs to be saved. With ERP, the data is saved on what we call an ERP server. Now, let's take a look at a company working manually without any system. You'll notice that the link between the departments is slow, tangled, and unclear. For example, let's say that you are working in sales at a company, and that company still uses paperwork to record the data. You had a customer, and that customer needed a specific item. You currently don't have that item in your branch. In this case, you have no means of knowing if this item is available in another branch or in the warehouse. Consequently, you will lose that sale. However, ERP has made it easier and quicker to get the information since all the branches, all the departments, and the warehouse within the facility, they will be linked together. Now let's take a look at a different company, and that company is working with individual systems. The departments here can work efficiently, but they will be separate entities. They will not have a clear communication within the company. That, of course, can affect the speed and the efficiency and even the quality of the business. To clarify that, let's consider an employee who needs sick leave. He will be required to get a sick note from HR, take it to his manager to be approved, and then give it back to HR for documentation. Now, that is kind of a long hassle, and that's valuable time wasted. It could be made a lot easier with the ERP system using um, the self-service, which is integrated into all departments. Now, let's take a look at companies that work with financial systems, systems that connect all departments through the concept of ERP. You'll notice, first of all, a strong, clear connection between all the departments using the ERP server, which is simply a computer. Now, the ERP systems, just as everything else in the world, they have their benefits and they have the risks. Let's learn about both. First of all, the benefits of the ERP system. We have first the stock monitoring. What does that mean? 
it means that the ERP system will send you notification or it will send you alerts when the stock is running critically low. Now, it improves the product quality as the system can save the client's feedback and comments, which gives the business room for improvement when they get to see what does their client think about them and think of the service that was provided. Now, the third point is that it provides accurate delivery dates. And that, of course, can reliably provide um, higher service for the customer as it guarantees that the delivery will be made on time. The last point would, will be the, um, the fact that it supports the business expansion as it can effectively and efficiently coordinate global demand, supply, and production. As for the risks of the ERP, the first thing we have is that it's expensive. Now, as you know, an ERP system can cost a company thousands to millions of dollars. And the second point is that it's time consuming. How is it time consuming exactly? The implementation or executing the uh, program itself can take months to a year. The third point is data migration. Data migration basically is transferring the data from the old system to the new one. So it takes time to migrate the data from the old methods used to the new ERP system in addition to the time needed to train the employees on how to use the ERP. The fourth point is comfortability with the company's business. Business can come in different fields and the activities differ greatly. Now you have to make sure that the ERP system will be compatible with the different fields of business, which is not always guaranteed. The last point, which I obviously forgot to add on the slide, is user's acceptance test. When you're implementing the ERP system in the company, you have to ensure that the employees are accepting of that system and that they are able to deal with it. Now, that is basically everything that you need to know as an introduction to ERP. Thank you so much for listening. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.